Anyone can believe. Any three-year-old can pray a prayer. But does the fruit of your life evidence genuine repentance and transformation? Repentance leads to our overcoming. Look at verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will dine with him and he with me. I've heard this verse uh, used strictly in reference to individuals, right? Saving experiences, perhaps you've seen this on like a gospel tract or you've seen this on a coffee mug. It happens. You go to some Christian bookstore and it's like, oh, wow, why are we putting that on a mug? Okay. That's a great white elephant gift. But in the context of this letter, it is the sad reality of a lukewarm church. A lost church. Jesus literally says that he's standing at the front door of the church knocking. And it's not a, a cute sort of rhythm, rhythmic knock for your, you know, significant other to know you're at the door. Right? But rather, it is this continuous pounding at the front door of the church. And Jesus is standing there and he's saying, if anyone, just one, hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in. Anyone. And he will enter in. And what's he say he will do? He will have communion with them and he will dine with them if just one person from that church would repent. He would come into those, that building and he would bring transformation and he would commune with them and he would dine with them if just one person. Think for a moment on the implications of what he is saying. Just one and he'll come in. Over verse 21. Jesus says, He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my Father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So not only will Christ commune with those who overcome, but he will grant them the opportunity to co reign with him. That is an unfathomable promise. It's amazing. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. So church, do you have an ear? Are you listening? Are you a true follower of Jesus Christ? 1 John 5 says, For everything that has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the overcoming that has overcome the world, our faith. Have you repented of your sin and placed your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord? 2 Corinthians 7.10 says, For godly sorrow produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world brings about death. Repentance leads to to salvation. So take a moment right now where you are and contemplate your life. Contemplate your actions, your thoughts, your deeds. Contemplate your heart. What do, the, what do your deeds evidence in your life? What, what, what fruit do you bear? You're probably familiar with this being at the Grove Bible Chapel. John 15, 8, my father is glorified in this, that you bear much fruit and in doing so prove to be my disciples. Does the fruit of your life speak proof of Jesus Christ? And if not, there needs to be a change. The beautiful thing about the Lord is it is the kindness of the Lord that leads to repentance. And we know repentance leads to genuine salvation. And so there is an invitation in God's kindness to you today, no matter where you are, no matter where you find yourself, to repent and commit yourself to following Christ. That might look differently for you. Maybe today you are totally lost and you know it. 
Maybe you've never heard these words before and today you're coming in and you're hearing the gospel for the very first time. Praise the Lord. Repent of your, your sin and embrace him by faith. Here's the beautiful thing about Christ. It doesn't matter how filthy you were before Christ. Christ transforms lives. And you are no longer viewed in the dirt and the filth of, of, of your garments. You are clothed in the righteousness and white garments of Christ. Repent and embrace Christ by faith. Maybe for some of you today, you've grown up in the church for a long time. You've believed in the Lord for a long time. You have even communicated that to others. Maybe you've even been baptized. You believe you have the knowledge, but there's no evidence of fruit in your life to suggest that that's actually genuine. Maybe you're younger than I am. Maybe you're more advanced in years than I am. It doesn't matter. The question is, have you repented of your sin and said, I'm, I'm done living for myself. I'm done living for the world. And I'm going to commit to making Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. Anyone can believe. Any three-year-old can pray a prayer. But does the fruit of your life evidence genuine repentance and transformation? And if it does not, today is the day for you to repent. You know, for some of you, it might even be that you're actually serving at the church because you have belief and knowledge, but you've never had heart change. And today maybe is the first time where you will have the opportunity to repent to the Lord and experience salvation change. And you know what? Let me say this. If that's you today, in this church that heralds the word of God the way it does, there's going to be no condemnation. There's going to be celebration. Do not let your pride convince you otherwise because you're, you're going to be ashamed that you weren't a believer until that moment. Who cares? The Lord's going to transform your life and now you're going to live in freedom. Praise the Lord. Whatever it is for you, wherever you find yourself, there's an invitation today to repent. And so I want to give you a moment. Just go ahead and bow your heads. We're going to come and we're going to close in, in, in prayer to the Lord. But I want to give you an opportunity to wrestle with the Lord where you are. There's nothing super spiritual or special about bowing your heads other than the fact that we're just trying to block out anything that could be a distraction. Our world is so filled with distractions, isn't it? But if you're feeling the conviction of the Lord, don't wait. Act on that. If you're feeling the drawing of the Spirit of God in your life, act upon it. And make today the day for life change.